tonight, uh, Shirley is going to be talking about uh, uh, mer merging uh, persons, mm -hmm. individuals in the in the uh, family search, and uh, uh, Jim is going to be uh, uh, sharing with us partner sites, partner sites uh, after after. Is that okay, Jim? Do you want to go first? Just make sure you have time to. Uh, however you want to do it, it's a, totally okay. up to you. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and go first? Are you seeing Hildalina Trueblood? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, now, we've had classes on how to use this. So this part here is a reminder. Remember, if you are on a person and looking at them, you can go over here to search records over on the right and you have family search, ancestry, find my past, my heritage, Geninet, Phile, or however you pronounce it. They even have Google. All you have to do is click on those and it will start searching on that person. Wifey and I just had a question come up uh, a week or so ago. We have it come up often, and this was from someone at church. So for the next minute or two, I'm going to talk about things for members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You can access these things. You uh, need to create your own sign-in and Ancestry especially, uh, you'll be able to access a membership to Ancestry and all of these others. What you do, you go up to the address bar of your browser and just type in familysearch.org slash partner access, hit enter. You're going to get this screen. And it says, create your personal accounts. We, Wifey and I have found a lot of members do, have not gone in to create their accounts and be able to use these tools. I'm going to read this. Create your personal account. A benefit to you as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is a free subscription to the following wow. family history websites. Using your subscription, you will be able to search more records, discover more about your ancestors, and make connections. Okay, that is for members. Now, I don't know who all is on, but if we have some non-members on, you can also access these uh, websites by going down to the Family History Center. Uh, also, many libraries will have them. Uh, now, if you have your own personal account, you can use the search function back on that first page and log in there. But church members need to go to each and every one of these sites, Ancestry, Find My Past, My Heritage, and the rest of them, and create your own account. Each of these websites have totally different types of records. They have totally different search engines, and some of them specialize in location. Delay, or however you pronounce that, is French. American Ancestors, I believe, is New England. New England. Yes, thank you, wifey. They're each a little different, but you have to go in and create your account on each and every one. I would go ahead and show you, but if I click us 
on this. It just says, here's your account because my computer knows who I am. Jim, can I ask a question? Uh, just a minute. You okay. may want to have your membership number handy. Yes, question. Is that the only way you can access this is by typing that in? There's no way to go on the website and click on an icon or something? Uh, you, you can go down to the bottom of the uh, home page, and there is a site map, I believe. And you can find it there, but this is by far the easiest way. But again, this is for members to get the free access. Any other questions or comments? Jim, you uh, you said something about American ancestors was from where we didn't. Uh, you talked around to turned around and talked to. Oh, sorry, that is uh, heavily. Uh, heavily New England. Okay. But any one of these, they may have a specialty, but they're not limited to. They all have other records also. Yeah. And things keep getting added as well. Yes. So you want to check periodically because it, they used to have just four and now they've added two more here. So any other questions or comments? My isn't my heritage the one that Karen Jorgensen uses to uh, colorize pictures and yes do that correct pictures. and and it'll do the weird animation it it does a pretty good job on colorizing actually mm -hmm. uh, and they've improved it um, over when they first came out with that mm -hmm. and that's a free thing that they do you don't have to correct correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Can you see? Can you see that duplicate records? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is a, a teaching module that some friends of ours, some missionary friends in Houston, used. They were teaching a genealogy class at the Lone Star College in North Houston, and they used this. And I thought. It, I would go through this first and then we'll do some examples of what this says, what this says to do. Okay, so first of all, each record has a different ID and see it's these, these that are marked right here. This is the same name, but the, they have different IDs. So everybody in Family Search is assigned uh, one of these uh, IDs and it's different for every person. And family tree is a collaborative tree where the goal is to work together to make one record of each person. So um, as we do family, our, as we do reach search and find family members to put in here, um, sometimes other people have done that research also and put it in there. So you may find two or more people by the same name with the same information and you'll have to merge merge them. Sometimes it's kind of scary because you don't know um, where the person got the information or, you know, whatever, but uh, you can always undo, undo a merge if you do it. So don't be afraid to do it. You can always go back and undo it if you find that you made a mistake. If you haven't made changes. Yes, if you haven't made changes to it. Okay. All right, Shirley. Yes. One of the problems I ran into is that a couple of mine had been done over 200 times. Yeah. Is there a limit that they put on it still? I mean, a long time ago, like I could put merge 10, but the rest of them just had to be in limbo. Oh, I don't know. I've never had that problem. Jim, do you know? I have run across that. And whenever they get to be that messy, I back away, but I think if you go up and click on the help button, uh, the uh, little circle with the question mark, uh -huh. uh, I think you can go there and get some assistance. You may have, you used to be able to call them. I think you can send an email and they will one person will personally work on it 
but I, I'm not totally sure. Okay, thank you. But sure. it, it, you it's asking. difficult and messy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, John had one, one of his ancestors that, I mean, we never did figure out all the different um, people that had made records for them for his person. We finally just gave out and said, we know this one, this is our record and uh, we hope nobody changes it. <laughs> so, okay. So this is the, first of all, you need to go to the person page for the, the person you're, you want to change, you have a duplicate for. I lost it. I lost it. And then oh, if you go to the bottom over here, if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll see it has possible duplicates, find similar people, merge by ID. So that's where it shows that this shows you have, uh, we have two possible duplicates on this record. Mm -hmm. You can click on possible duplicates and it'll take you, oh, it'll be the next screen. But you can also, if you, sometimes that says zero, but you know there's a duplicate because you're looking at two, two of them. So what, in that case, what you need to do is click on merge by ID and copy this ID number that we saw earlier up here for each person. And uh, then you can, this little screen will come up and you can type. If you're in the person page, then if you do merge by ID, you can type in the duplicate that you want to merge. Does that make sense? You have to be on the person page because so that person will come up as the as the one you're merging. So there are two ways to, to check for duplicates. One is possible duplicates, and the other is merge by ID. Okay, so merging duplicate records. Okay, identify the duplicate and click review. So when you click on that this previous one up here, possible duplicates, this is the screen you get. And it shows you this, this is the person whose person page you were on. And then it shows you possible duplicates. And you, this one is two, I don't, so this one had two of them, so they're both here. So they chose this one and just review the merge. Or if, yeah, review the merge, because you want to look at it first. So it shows you uh, each of those records. This is your original on the right. This is the one that you have, you were on his person page and it came up here. And then this is the duplicate, the one that you're going to merge. We strongly encourage you to keep track of the ID numbers as well. It's nice to know that the right side is the original, but we encourage you to keep track of those uh, ID numbers mm -hmm. as well, please. And here's the ID number right here. <laughs> and that'll, that'll help a lot, especially if you're doing more than one person. Okay. Hmm. The records appear side by side. And the person on the right is the is the one that will be um, the person that's left after you merge them. So you want to um, here you can switch the positions. If this one over here has a lot more information than the one on the right, you can switch them, and then this one, this record would go away, and this would be the surviving record. Review them very carefully before you make the switch. Mm -hmm. So, okay, if two people are a possible match, click yes up here. This is when you go to the, uh, let's see, did that go up here? Okay, see, this is it at the top of the page. There's also one at the bottom of the page where it says back, not a match, or yes, continue. So after you review everything, if they are the, the matching people, if they're the same person, then you can click on yes, continue. If they're not a match, you can just click on not a match. Or if you don't know yet, if you if there, this one doesn't have enough information for you to make that decision, you can click back and it won't do anything. You'll back out of the out of the merge. Okay. So if you continue to scroll down, if after you've clicked yes, merge, if you continue to scroll scroll down, you'll come up, you'll be able to compare the information and relationships. And you can click replace on any of them that you want to replace. If you don't, 
if this one has more information than you have here, then you don't need to click on replace and it won't move it over. You'll keep this information that's on this one right here. Okay. Uh, duplicate spouses, children, and parents would all uh, automatically be added. And this makes it easier to find and merge duplicate families. See, this one has uh, family and spouse and children, but it doesn't list anybody, but this one does. Matter of fact, it has two families, so that won't change anything. If the name is important, copy it to add later as an alternate name. Um, that's on your, on your person page under details. Um, this has a different spelling than the person's name, so you can write that down and add that as an optional spelling or an optional name on the details page on uh, at the very beginning. Some people may have gone by different names at different times. Okay. And of course, you can undo any information that you need to. So if you move somebody over and you say, nope, I don't need to do that guy, he's already listed here, then you can you can undo it and it'll move back over there. Okay, any questions so far? Surely this is Carly. I had a quick question, but we, we might wanna hold it until after this part. When, when you mentioned um, alternate names, I have a situation that I, I might need a little assistance with. Uh, okay. It's my great grandmother who went by four or five different variations of her name and i know it's all her based on the records and she, her husband had a very unique name so every record where i have the both i can tell it's her even though her name seems to change every time mm -hmm. um so I, I might but i couldn't seem to find that alternate place to put the names and this was a while back when i created her record so i'm sure it's changed since then anyway but might i might ask for your help with that okay this is um one of my guys uh, let's see here in the in the detail view where it said, and then come down to the next one. It says other information. Mm -hmm. You click that. This doesn't have any other in there. Maybe that this one doesn't have any, but you would enter it. And, I mean, you could, this is the place where it would show up, add information. So you could add. Oh, I see. Okay. So, so it's on, on the person page. Under the details, you have the vital details, and then under that is other information. And you can add the information there. Great, thank you. Okay. And then do those alternate names come up when you're reviewing um, possible duplicates? Like, will they? Um, not usually. It's usually just the names that are on the records. That, Shirley, uh -huh. what, whenever you're using the search, function you know that i showed at the beginning of my little spiel uh, -huh. uh whenever you click on especially in family search if you click on search family search it will search both names okay so it'll search the primary name and then it will search any of the alternate names you've put in there yes yes i've had that happen with uh my mother and her family in the 1930 census when she was really little they totally misspelled the last name do they had it as dense instead of dew and so when i put in the correct information it'll show up with both mm, and it actually showed up as might be the correct information because i had documentation yeah yeah so it it works out yep okay thank you for that okay sure okay let's see and again you can undo any information that you that you don't feel is correct and I apologize there, but I got a phone call, so you may have already mentioned this while I was away, but the That's family okay. I'm with is always on the right. Like if I'm the main character, like if I pulled up my name and it said as a duplicate record, my name would be on the right. Yes, uh, your your information. Okay. It's in your family tree is on the right. Okay, okay, good. That always worried me that I might be moving the wrong things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so the sources are automatically added to the original record. So any sources that you have in the record that you're merging automatically moves over to the sources with your with your record. 
Emory's notes and discussions are automatically added, but not displayed. Um, so everything associated with this person over here is automatically added to this person here when you merge them, okay? Once everything has been reviewed and correctly added or replaced, you can click continue and go on to the next one. Okay, so uh, there's always the little reason for merge and it's the same little re, uh, reason box that you have whenever you make a change in a record. And this is to help other people understand why you're merging these two people. So um, if you um, say if you merge two people and then whoever was responsible for this record comes back and looks at it and says, well, why did they do that? They'll have the reason here and they'll be able to decide if, uh, if that was correct or not, <clears throat> or at least see why what your reasoning is for doing it. And uh, let's see, and here are some suggestions that you can use. And all you have to do is just click on one of these and it'll automatically add it up there. Okay, and then after you've done all that, then you can finish, click finish the merge and it'll combine the two. And then this is, I thought was interesting. It's, um, I don't know if any of you have ever uh, sent an email to somebody that on family search that has entered information for, on someone in your family line, but you can get their information here. Here's their, their name. And you can click on their name and it'll give you their email or it says send a message. It doesn't give you their email information, but you can send a message through family search to them and uh, then they can respond if they want to. I've never had, I've only had two or three people respond to <laughs> a message, <laughs> but it's worth a try. Um, it's the same thing over here. If, if you go to the changes that were made and click on one of the changes, Again, it'll give you um, view my relationship with that person, um, their email address, or you can send them a message through Family Search. I often send a message over to them first to tell them that I'm would like to make this change, but there, here's the reason why, and uh, see if you can get their agreement to making that change, and that and that really seems to help out uh, if if you explain to them why you want to make the change and uh, why you think it's right and uh, and you show them enough evidence that uh, that what you're doing is uh, is right and proper they uh, generally will go along with you and so it's just trying to keep peace in the household if you know what i mean okay are there any questions on this okay I got a question. I don't know if it's to that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, let's say I'm I'm looking at on the right side of the family I'm working with, and there's a duplicate record on the left. And if that duplicate record has some information I don't, and I move it over to mine, and then I merge them, what happens to that old record that maybe somebody else has written down somewhere that ID number and it's no longer existing? Or does that make any sense? Yeah. Um, the family search will refer them to this message, I think, to this new person that you merged it with. Okay. Because I do a family newsletter, and if I put a family group sheet, and sometimes I talk about people, I put their ID number on family search. So if that changes, all that stuff's gone. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, okay. is that your understanding, Jim? If somebody comes back and yeah, uh, the 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 old record isn't really destroyed, mm -hmm. but it's made inactive. But it will reference, like Shirley says, the new merged record. So somebody else could merge my record, and then my ID disappears, right? Yep. It it won't totally disappear but it will be referenced to the new oh. member okay so if i went out and did a a search and i typed my old id number in it would take me to the new one yes it would okay, okay. sorry about that was just that's something okay. i wondered about yeah that's okay um 
So I'll show you now how to, how to do it. Uh, this is William Whitaker, and it, over in the research help, it has possible duplicates. So I can click there and it'll come up, or I can scroll down to the bottom of the page, and here it says pop possible duplicates. There's one there, so I can click there. Either of those places would get it for me. And so it shows possible duplicates. So I'll just click on review the merge. Okay, so this is my record, this William Whitaker. And here is a record someone else created. And you'll see the numbers are different. This is GF145Y2, and this one is KNZSXP5. So this one, my record has a lot more information than this one does, at least this top part of it. So we'll scroll down a little more and see the family. And we want to compare these and make sure they're the right people. So his spouse is Elizabeth Carlton, and my spouse is Elizabeth Carlton. And this one has a marriage date, but this one does not. And this one, the only child it lists is John Hancock. And this one lists a whole bunch of children. Is there a John Hancock? And this one? I don't see a John Hancock there. 1752. <laughs> so he would have been born in between these two. Okay. The parents are Joshua Whitaker and Jane Bannister Parker. These are the same. Here's their marriage and here's his brothers and sisters. This one doesn't list any brothers and sisters. So the only source this one has is William Whitaker and see the difference in the spelling. This was back in England and that's how they spelled it there. Or it wasn't, it was after they came here, but just shortly after. And this record was from the Pennsylvania Historical Society. We, when we were on our mission, we, this was a big project that, that uh, it helped to index some of it. It went on for years. <laughs> anyway. So let's see. Okay, so why did somebody put the second name in when you already have it and you have the sources listed there? What second name are you talking about? Okay. On the right <laughs> side, you've got your information and somebody put in the left side. Mm -hmm. They put it in in, what was it, 22? And you put yours in in, in uh, 2012? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, when you want to add a person, like if you're building a family and you want to add a person, you put in whatever information you have, and then it shows you possible matches, right? <laughs> so apparently they didn't know, they didn't have enough information to know for sure if that was at the time, maybe they didn't have the wife and all, all of those other, all of these other names when they first put it in. And so there's rather than Choosing it them. looks like they didn't even check to see if there were anything to merge with, uh -huh. any duplicates. Yeah, maybe they just wanted to have their own record for their own file and not not go with somebody else's information. I don't since, know. since the one in the right didn't have that one child that, that they had on the left, uh, they that one child may be the key issue here it may be the person that that's related to them and they're trying to fit this person into that family you know and that that may that may happen we don't we don't have any idea what uh, what the uh, goal was in mind but anyway you uh, you don't you don't know you just have to look at them and see whether you want to accept that in information into yours or not okay probably what i would do is contact this person and why they why, uh, why they didn't choose this person <laughs> on the right. I mean, uh, like John said, that may the child that's not included on this side may be a deal breaker for him. I don't know. All the other information matches though. We can look at this record. 
that they have, and it is a, it's marriage records. And it is for Eliza Carlton, William Whitaker. There's their marriage place, Pennsylvania. So we can even look at the marriage record here. If I can make that big enough for you to, for you to see it. Dark. What was the name I was looking for? Carlton? Yeah. Oh, can it? Yeah. And William Whitaker. Okay. So here is here's the name Carlton Eliza, 1922, William Whitaker. They're both of Kennett, looks like Kennett, Pennsylvania. So this is, I mean, this is their marriage record. I that doesn't answer the question of where the, they got the child's name. Jim, what do you think? Would you go ahead and merge it or would you would you wait and do some research on that son's name? I would uh, click on the son mm -hmm. and check it out. See if there's any no sources, no, no sources for him, though. Mm -hmm. I personally I would I would merge it because the parents match. Mm -hmm. He fits in the line, okay, date wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But okay. you know that that's, doesn't mean him necessarily. But. Mm -hmm. So that's when you can you know you can do what you like if you want to try and research the child a little bit. But everything matches. The parents match. The spouse matches and the wed the marriage date matches so let's go ahead and, and then you have all of these other sources on the original record oh, there's a ton of them quakers okay so then you can go to his personal page and put notes in there of you merged him well it'll it'll show up on his person page that they were merged so I'll go ahead and do continue. But the but the reason, the reason will be given to? Yes, uh -huh. I'll, I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so this, select the information you want to save. I don't want to replace any of that because my information is more. Eric, can I ask you a question again? Sure. This is stuff that always worries me about messing somebody's records so, up. Now, your side has a lot more detailed data and sources than the one on the left. So, but if you felt like those were correct people and you merge them, it's going to keep all your data, right? Right. Unless you Unless move you something, move something, something to, the right. to the right. That's right. That's right. And so this will all be the same. If you move it from the left to the right, it's going to overwrite what you got on your side, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So you'll click on replace and it just moves it right over there. Yeah. Okay. And you can always undo it if you want to. Now for <laughs> Elizabeth, you'll notice that her number is the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On both of them. Yes. How would that happen? Well, they, I don't know, they must have um, had her name to begin with. Uh, they must have been working with her name and they added a spouse who was uh, this guy. The guy we're working with, William Whitaker. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay, so there isn't anything else. <clears throat> there isn't anything else that we can add. The source automatically went over there. Okay, so we'll continue. And then this is where, explain why you think this merge is correct. 
And I'm just going to take this one. It says all vital information and relationships match. And then it gives the ID numbers of the two, two men that were merging. So that I clicked on that and it added it up there. I love that. That is a major improvement. Rather than having to type yeah. the, same, the same kind of statement over and over and over again. That's so great. Right. Yep. Did it add in the other child? Pardon? Did it add the other child? Siblings. He's the one in yellow at the bottom. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, John Hancock, okay. It did add, add him. I'm sorry. How many children were on there? <laughs> she must have been pregnant her whole life. There were a lot. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, counting that one. That's a lot. <laughs> no, I came from a family of nine and that was a lot. Okay, then finish the merge. Okay. So if you decide that this is not correct, see it says here merge completed. So if if you want to go back and look at that, you can unmerge as long as you don't change anything on on the record. So if I look, if I come back and say, you know, I don't really don't know that I should have done that. I can just unmerge it and it'll separate them. Okay. Are there any questions? Do you want me to do another one or do you think you got it? I just have a comment. Uh, somebody had asked, why did we have a duplicate name here? Something Family Search did a few years ago was take every marriage record they had and created families and dump them into Family Search. They did not connect them to existing families. They created a lot of duplicates that way. And it's just a marriage. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. So that it was nice to be able to find the marriage, but it, it's also a mess in that it created duplicates and you didn't have birth dates for the spouses. The only date was and place was the marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any, any other questions? Okay, I had a question. Okay. Um, okay, I have a... You know what? My question isn't really related to this, but it's a separate question. So okay, why don't you see if anybody has another question, and then I'll ask mine. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have anybody else have a question on this? Brother Hill, did that answer your questions? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right. Okay. I have a a child, and it's entered with the wrong parents. How do I fix that? Move the new? child? Yeah, how do, I, how do I do that? First copy down is number to make sure. Yeah, that, that's the first thing. Yeah. Uh, there, it surely is just about pointing to it, the uh, little pencil, the icon okay. that's after every name. Shirley, okay. just click on one of those, one of the kids. Oh, I see. Okay. And see, I... you. Uh, here I am pointing to the screen and you can't see me <laughs> doing that. But uh, I see, see you it can now. remove or replace the child, the mother, or the father. Okay. Here's the mother and here's the father. And, and those can be, a, they're easy to do, but they can be tricky to do. And when you're ready to do that, why I'll volunteer our kitchen table or your <laughs> kitchen table, or we can do it by Zoom and share screens. Okay. Uh, it, it's much easier if to 
if we're doing the one that needs to be done rather than just talking theoretical, but it, it okay. really is easy. Okay. And after you do one, then it it's, takes the mystery out of it. But that brings okay. the question up for me. If you remove the child, what happens to them? They're out in, in limbo somewhere? If, if you, you just remove, remove I, I think Sister Grisso, the first thing she said was write down their number uh, so you don't lose them. Yeah. Uh, if you remove the child, they are out there as a single person, not attached no. to anybody. Now, what does it mean, replace? If, uh, if it shows me as a child and someone says replace, does somebody going to replace me? <laughs> um, in, in case, you know, if you have wrong parents or uh, a child, you that's really a cousin and, and you need to move them around. It's oh, okay. just a way to remove them, uh, to move them. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had some where there was a second marriage and there's children by the first and children by the second and somebody put the children of the first mm -hmm. in with the second. So mm -hmm. you have to remove them and put them with the first wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It happens a lot. And, and you, you, that, that would be a good replace. Rather than the reason. way the wording is misleading to me. But uh, not, when, not really. Whenever you do it, it uh, becomes very logical. But okay. you can either remove them and then go back and add them, or you maybe, you're, or maybe just do replace. And you can do it either way. Makes sense. Just like Candy says, write down their PID, their personal ID number, so you don't lose them. Okay. My question is, the program keeps changing. And there used to be a pull-down menu where I could find the latest updates. Mm -hmm. Like they go out and say, we've added 2 million names, for blah, blah, blah. Or we've, we've changed this or we've changed that. I can't find that anywhere anymore. But I know it's got to be out there. Do you know where they moved that to, Jim? I think I tried to find it before and couldn't find it. Um, go to, uh, here I am pointing to the screen again. Uh, <laughs> click on family search, uh, the tree over on the left, the icon, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, go to, go all the way to the bottom, blog. Okay, the blog. Right, blog. And I thought it was in there. Now that changes daily. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I think they do it in there. Because I, a lot of times when I'm talking to people, I'll, I'll always say, if you don't find something, always go check here because they're always updating and changing the program. Well, stop, it's Shirley. Uh, go uh, the blue doors. Uh, new free yeah. historical records, five September. Oh, okay. oh, okay. So that's under blog. Under blog. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And there's a lot of fun stuff in there. Okay. Yeah, there at least uh, the yeah. records that they've added. Okay. See, fam Family Search is a huge program. I I mean, you just clicked on one little spot and look what you bring up here. Uh, yeah. You know, clicking on the search function. I mean, you can search books in libraries there. And a lot of people don't realize that is there. That's page That's one that. of page two of 205 pages. That'll keep you busy, Bob. Bob. They literally change it all the time, daily. They keep improving it, you know. Fortunately, yes, most of the time. <laughs> yeah, this one is. Man, where, huh? Timber. Just this week. Okay. Any other questions? No, I appreciate that one. All righty. Well, we will. Um, 
go ahead and close.